Somebody asked earlier, Mr. Duick, this is a work period. We're going to be going over the take-home quiz. I'm going to try and give you about 20 minutes at the end of class to ask questions and work on whatever you want. So let us mark this. Who's my favorite student? Sadly, it's none of you. Is my screen still frozen? Let me double check. Should I freeze? Nope, we're good. All right. Number one, I'm not going to give you a fill-in-the-blank kind of question like this, but I could easily turn this into a multiple choicey type of a question by saying, which of the following is the best definition of acceleration and have you pick A, B, C, or D? Uh, first of all, I'm going to answer the second part first. Is acceleration a vector? Does direction matter? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, because one way will cause you to speed up, the other way will cause you to slow down. So that has a completely different effect. Uh, by the way, you're going to learn in the next unit, acceleration is even more special than you realize. Einstein argued that acceleration changes the laws of the universe. Say, what? We'll talk about what he meant by that. So one mark if you said yes. And then define acceleration. Aaron, what did you say acceleration was? Acceleration is the rate that an object speeds up. Say that again? The rate at which an object speed speeds up. I'll live with that, but also slows down at. So I would, instead of saying speeds up, I would say it's the rate at which an object speed changes. That would work. I g yep. The constant change of speed. I'll accept that in physics 11, but in, that's because in physics 11, I've said to you, we can only handle constant acceleration, but changing acceleration is also a thing. But I would live with that. Yeah, it was over here. I would live with that. If an object is accelerating, it's changing its velocity. I think the definition I gave you at the beginning of lesson two was something, I think I'm quoting, the rate of change of velocity per second or something like that. Or because I'm lazy, I might have written this. Or I may even have written this. I take a fair number of different definitions. Oh, in fact, you know what? There's probably four different ways that I could write acceleration. Sorry, three different ways I can write acceleration because there's, there's two other equations that also have an A in them, and I could get the A by itself if I felt like it. Okay. Number two, an accelerating body must at all times... Okay, how would I handle this one here? Josh, I decided to go with the process of elimination. I looked at each one and I asked... Are they true or not? So does an accelerating body at all times have to have a positive velocity? Can you be accelerating and have a negative velocity? Yes. So I crossed out that one. Can you be accelerating and have a decreasing speed? Yes. Yeah, because in physics, all acceleration means is a change in. It doesn't mean speeding up. In English, we say decelerating. In physics, we'll just call that acceleration. We'll just put a negative in front of it if we need to. So that can't be right. Does acceleration always require you to have a changing direction, or can you be going in a straight line and also accelerating? Josh, what's the correct answer? And velocity, because it's a vector, it has both magnitude and direction. That means you can accelerate by changing the magnitude, speeding up, slowing down, or changing the direction. What happened to number three and four? Badly worded. I nuked them. Number five, and I didn't leave you enough space to show your work here, and I'm going to cut corners. Matt, is this a quiz? Say yes or no. Sorry, let me try that again. Matt, is this a quiz? Say yes or no. Yes. I should go like this. A equals question mark. VI equals 25. I should do my full list. I'm Because I want to give you time to work in class later on, I'm going to do this way too fast. I'm going to do this like I would do it in my homework. So I'm going to go A equals VF minus VI over T. It's going to be 5 minus 25 all over 8. It's going to be negative 5. Take away 25 is negative 25 by negative 10 divided by 4. Ne uh, negative 2.5? meters per second squared. If you got that right, 2 out of 2. Otherwise, I would give you 1 mark for the equation, half mark for the numbers, half mark for the answers. If you're at this stage still unsure of the units, you want to make yourself flashcards tonight or whatever it takes, write them out. You need to have the units in your brain by tomorrow. Or do you? 
you might be able to find the units somewhere else on the test if you're having a blank out as well. I can't remember what are the units for velocity. Oh, in this question, he said the word velocity and the number next to it has meters per second. So that must be the units. So you can always do that, but you really should have them by now. Okay? For the rest of the questions, it's going to be one mark for the equation, half mark for the number, half mark for the answers. Should you ever leave a question blank then? Please don't. Because I think all of you are at the stage where you can find the correct equation, at least. Okay. Um, number five, same question. Sorry, number six, same question. It's going to be VF minus VI over A. It's just that we're stopping negative five. Yes? Meters per second squared? You don't have to put the point zero. It's just a habit. I tend to go to two or three sig figs. Is that okay, Tony? Good. Uh, number seven, I don't know why there's no space there. I, there should have been. I'm going to go check my original documents. I'm going to have to do number seven right here. It wants me to find how fast. You know what? It wants me to find VF, and I'm going to go VI plus AT, where VI is 103 plus negative 5. I did put a negative right there because I saw slows down. 7.5. Uh, it's going to be something in the 60s, I think. 103 plus negative 5 times 7.5. 65.5, is that right? If you missed the negative, I would give you 1 out of 2. Oh, and if you did miss the negative, you would have had 140.5. I'd give you 1 out of 2. Number 8, it wants me to find time. I think you ended up going T equals VF minus VI all over A. Is that correct, I think, for the equation? Yep. Oh, I thought you had a hand up. So it's going to be 10 minus 2 all over 3.5. It's going to be bracket 10 minus 2 all over 3.5. And again, let me emphasize, I would normally not do it this sloppy and quick on a quiz. I would make my list, list my data, and do this properly, but I'm just cutting corners. I would not take 2.28. I would take 2.29, or I would take 2.3. But if you said 2.28, I would say to you, learn to round off. We round off. We don't chop off. And units, seconds. What must your initial velocity, I hadn't done this one with you in a long time, but I guess VI would be VF minus AT. It would be VF 20 minus 3.2 times 3.3. 20 minus 3.2 times 3.3. And I get 9.44 meters per second. Number 10 is worth three marks. That usually means we need to find something in order to find something. In fact, Matt, Matt, it does say you'll need to find A first. So I usually, if I got to find something in order to find something, I just draw a line in the middle. I'm going to find A first. And I think I'm going to find A by going VF minus VI over T, where VI, sorry, VF is 30, VI is at rest and 12 seconds, and so you find that A is 2.5 meters per second squared. You're writing little 10-bit notes to each other? Okay, it's called an attention span here, stay with me. Is that right for A? I did that in my head, I might be wrong. And then, now it wants VF, it's gonna be AT. Why didn't I write VI plus AT? You could, but VI is zero, and I'm naturally lazy, so it's gonna be 2.5 times 7.5. 2.5 times 7.5, 18.8. I would not take 18.7. I would take a half mark off. I would accept 18.75. I just usually go to three sig figs, meters per second. Uh, number 11, they said dropped, so I can assume that VI is zero. Oh, dropped, A is negative 9.8. And then it looks like they gave me some time values. I think for both of these, I'm just going to use VF equals AT. Technically VI plus AT, but dropped. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, negative 19.6 meters per second. Is that right? And 6 times 9.8, negative 58.8 meters per second. Is that right? 
Again, I'm doing math in my head, so if I'm wrong, let me know. Two marks each. I guess I would give you one mark if I saw that, and then one mark for the answer, because there's not much to it here. I don't like the way number 12 is worded, because number 12 requires you to assume that it's dropped. Gerard, this is one of the reasons I'm not counting this quiz. If the question said, how long does it take a freely falling dropped object to reach these velocities, then I would be okay with that on the test. But the way this is worded now, you have to, well, he doesn't say dropped. I guess I'll assume it because he didn't give me any of the information. I'm not interested in making you uncertain on a test like that. It says how long. I think for both of these, I'm going to use T equals VF minus VI over A, although since VI is zero, it's going to be T equals VF over A. It's going to be negative 24.5 divided by negative 9.8. I'm going to guess, is that 2.5 seconds? And it's going to be negative 63.7 divided by negative 9.8. I'm not doing these in my head. I'm making an educated guess. Is it 6.5 seconds? Yeah. Number 13 as well. Does it say the word drop to number 13? I wouldn't let this get on the test. Now, if it said, how far does a freely falling dropped object fall in each of these times, then I'd live with it. But it wants us to find how far. I guess we have to assume that VI is zero. Uh, VF, oh no, we don't have VF. We have time, and it wants us to find D. Oh, A is negative 9.8. You know what? I think I'm just going to, for both of these, use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. But since VI is zero, I'm just going to write the half AT squared. But since I'm so lazy, I'm not even going to write the a uh, part of the one half. I'm just going to write the half part because the one's not going to make a difference. And so it's going to be negative 9.8 times 2. Oh, I can do this one in my head. Negative uh, 19.6, is that the answer for A? Yes. B, it's going to be, oh, I can do this one in my head too, but I have to write it out so I can see it. 6 squared over 2. 6 squared is 36 divided by 2 is 18. 18 times negative 9.8 is going to be a negative 180 minus uh, negative 177 point, no, 6.6. 6. Negative 176.6? 6. 0.4. Carried it wrong. Gah! Negative 176.4. But again, if you said negative 176 to three sig figs, I'm fine with that. Now, it said how far. If you left the negative off, you could challenge me on that. If I marked that wrong, you could say, Mr. Duick, it doesn't say what's the displacement. And because of that, Mr. Duick, you left it arbitrary. And I would totally have to listen to your argument and cave. And say, so, yeah, if you said positive and positive, question wasn't clear. So I'd live with that. On the test, when in doubt, give the vector answer, and then you're good. Next page. I've had a whole bunch of people ask me about number 14. I like number 14. I like number 14. I like number 14. And what they've been asking me about for number 14 is, my calculator gave me an error. Here is my guess. First of all, we're dropping from the top of the CN Tower, and we're ending up below from where we started. Brian, the first thing that I would do is I would make that a negative displacement, because we're ending up below from where I started. And now I'm good. How long? I'm going to use D equals AT squared over 2, because it did say dropped. So I can assume VI is 0. And if I do that, the D would drop down like a domino times by 2, divide by A, square root. Now, the nice thing here is if you miss the negative 533, your calculator would give you an error, and that's the universe tapping you on the shoulder and basically saying, Dad, go check your signs. You missed something subtle. So that won't always happen, but it will often happen. 2 times negative 533.3 divided by negative 9.8. I do get a positive square root. I did have one person show me theirs. Mr. Duick, this seems really fast. What have I forgotten to do? What do I need to do still? 
Square root. Or not really fast. This seems like a long time. Yeah, square root. And I get 10.4 seconds and change. Okay. Anybody been to the CN Tower? Yeah? When were you there last? I think you can do a tour on the outside. You can pay and they'll put you in harnesses and you can walk around on the outside. Did you do that? No. Okay. And I've been told now they've added one where you can stand on the edge and with the harness on your back, they'll lower you out face down in midair with your feet on the edge and you can just sit there and enjoy the view. I In Australia? Yeah, and they have some hotel where they have like glass. Yeah. So when you walk over, you can see everything. Yeah. This one, though, is you're out there just strapped in. Um I might be able to psych myself up to do that, but I would have to go to a special place. I'd have to go to full Captain Physics teacher mode, which is what I do when I'm scared is, okay, I'll analyze the physics of this and I'll talk my way through it and then I can usually do something like that. Okay. Pardon me? Skydiving was surprisingly tamer than I thought. So, and there was a couple of points where I was like, okay, I'm going through this, but once I did it, it was kind of, huh, that was... It, it, it was disappointingly tame. I thought there would be may, way more of the amusement park ride stomach feeling. None of that. What? Did you uh, off yourself? No. The, the one type of rides that I don't like, I love amusement park rides, but the ones I don't enjoy are the elevator style rides. So as a classic example, I've gone on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror many, many times. And my friend, I'll do it with peer pressure if there's people with me, but my friend who knows me best, he, you know, Kelvin, you were whispering the numbers to yourself. Yep. Okay, now the normal force is, okay, now the acceleration is this, okay, now I'm going to feel heavier, okay, now I'm going to feel lighter, okay. Even without the seatbelt, actually there's still enough force holding me here, I could let the, and I'll talk my way through it. I've reached the point now where I can enjoy the rides, those rides, but it took a while to get there. The One of the first, uh, pause the video for a second, sorry, YouTube story. How fast would the rock be moving? Aaron, what won't the velocity be when it hits the ground? Zero. Where is the velocity zero? One place at the top. Or VI can be zero if you're dropping. But it's not zero when you hit the ground. I gotta be honest. I wimped out here. Because I still had the time value sitting right there, I did this. Because it was so much faster to go negative 9.8 times answer button. I used an answer to find an answer. And what I'm going to say to you now, Oliver, you've learned enough physics. If you're confident and it's the shortest way, if you want to use an answer to find an answer, go ahead. If you were being a good test writer, you really should have gone VF squared equals 2AD. What happened to the VI squared? It's zero. Cross out the squared square root. And you would have gone 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 533.3 square root of that. That also works. The only issue is, why is this answer wrong? You'll have to insert the negative. There is, I'm telling you now, going to be one question on your test tomorrow where you'll have to use that equation to find velocity, and then you'll have to say, oh, it's on its way down. I'll have to add the negative. Do you always add the negative? No, if it's on its way up or if it's a car going forwards, that's positive, but in free fall, if you know it's on the way down, negative. Did I talk to you folks about the test yesterday and give you all information about it? You're, okay, I did two of my three blocks, and I couldn't remember which one I forgot. Make sure after the quiz, don't let me forget, I'm going to give you a bunch of hits of what you're going to see on the test. Okay. 15. I haven't done one like this with you, which means I wouldn't let this go on the test because you haven't seen it before. But on a quiz, I don't mind Josh forcing you to confront, what do I do when I don't know what to do on a quiz? I think that's good. Josh, what's number 15 asking me to find? Even more basic. Read me the first four words. It's asking me to find how many times farther. I haven't done that with you. Josh, let's suppose you got five bucks. I've got 50 bucks. How many times more money do I have than Josh? How can you take a 50 and a 5 and get 10 as an answer? 
I guess we're going to do the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the distance it falls in 10 seconds. I'll call that D10. I'm going to find the distance it falls in one second. I'll call that D1. And you know what I'm going to do with those two answers? Divide them. It's kind of counterintuitive because it says how many times farther, and you're dividing. But if you haven't noticed, often in word problems, the English and the math are backwards. So it's going to end up being AT squared over 2 and AT squared over 2 because VI is 0. Again, this doesn't include the phrase dropped, so I wouldn't let this get on a test. If it said freely falling dropped object, then I'd be okay with it. But it's going to be negative 9.8 times 10 squared over 2. Negative 490, yes? And negative 9.8 times 1 squared over... You know what, Josh? This is so easy, I'll bet even you can do it. What's 1 squared? 1 times 1 is... Look at you. And then, so it's going to be times negative 9.8. What's 1 times negative 9.8? Or divided by 2, I think negative 4.9. And then I think when you divide them, it's 100 times bigger, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I already told you I'm not going to ask you that, but honestly, did I do anything dramatically new there? I was stubborn and clever. Physics 12... I will always ask you one question on every test that you haven't seen before. Because in Physics 12, I'm expecting most of you are planning on going to university. I can teach you how to, what do I do when I don't know what to do, how to deal with that on a test, and I'll try and build some skills for that. Physics 11, though, won't give that to you. Uh, number 16 is a bit interesting. I had some people who saw the word downhill, and they said, Mr. Duick, should I make that acceleration negative? I'm fine if you did that, Gibson, and if you were consistent all the way through, that works. I chose to imagine downhill, because it was slanty, as going forwards, and so I kept the acceleration positive. We'll both be fine as long as we're consistent all the way through. They want me to find VF. I said VF is going to be AT. Uh, VI is zero, because it slips its brakes. And so I said it's going to be 1.1 times 6.5, I can do that in my head. It's going to be 7, it's going to be 5, carry the, uh, 800, uh, 8.12? 8 no, that's wrong. 7.1, 7.1, ah, wow, did I botch that, Mr. Duick. It's going to be 7.15, is that what it is? Meters per second. If you let that be down, you would get negative 7.15, and I would accept that because you decided to let down be negative. That's fine. It's arbitrary. Uh, how far will it coast? D equals... I... Yeah. I'd probably go AT squared over 2. You could also use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. It's going to be... What was A? 1.1 times 6.5. Don't forget the squared. All over 2. Twenty three point two. And again, if you let down be negative, you would get a negative answer here, and I'd accept that. Uh, motorcycle accelerate. Oh, three marks. I'm probably going to have to find something in order to find something. What do I need to find? So I made a little note here. I said they want me to find T. Looks like VF is 16. Looks like VI is 0. That's only two things. What else do I need if I want to find T? So I did A equals, and I drew a blank as though that's a blank I need to fill in to answer the real question. This is my high-tech labeling system. Question mark next to the final answer, that the thing they want me to find. Blanks next to things I need to fill in along the way. Whatever works for you, Matt, I'm fine with, but works for me. So I said, you know what? A also equals VF minus VI over T, where they said V 9.9 uh, .9 minus 0 all over 1.8. That's going to be 99 over 18. Divide by 9, divide by 9. It's going to be 11 over 2. 5.5? And then I walked that to here, and I said T is going to be VF minus VI all over A, although VI is 0, so I could have just skipped writing that part. It's going to be 16 divided by 5.5. 
2.91, if you said 2.90, I would take a half mark off. If you just said 2.9, I'd be okay with that. But 2.91 seconds. What's its acceleration? A equals VF minus VI all over T. What's VI of any aircraft taking off ever? We'll assume that they always come to that stop because they typically come around a corner. They come to a stop and they got to wait for tower clearance, right? So we can assume that VI is 48, T is 12, so 4 meters per second squared. Is that right? How fast is the plane moving after 16 seconds? VF equals AT. It's going to be 4 times 16. I can do that in my head. 64 meters per second. How far down the runway? I think I'm going to go D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. It's going to be 4 times 15. Don't forget the squared. Divided by 2. I can do that in my head. 15 squared is 225. It's going to be 225 times 2. 450 meters. Nearly done. What's the rate of acceleration of a mountain bike which slows down? The fact that I saw that and I looked at the numbers, I said, I'm going to get a negative acceleration. I'm not going to panic if I get that. It's going to be A equals VF minus VI all over T. It's going to be VF 10 minus VI 15 all over T. You get negative 2.5 meters per second squared or did I make a dumb Is that right? No? Am I wrong? 3.25. I was looking at the two up here for some dumb reason. Well, that was silly. Oh, that I can't do in my head. It's going to be bracket. It's going to be bracket. There we go. 10 minus 15 divided by 3.25. Do you get, uh, how about negative 1.54? Meters per second squared. Is that a big acceleration? No. Nah. You'd notice it, but it wouldn't be like it would interrupt your conversation if you were having it with somebody else or something like that. Uh, unlike number 20. So number 20, this is a number, I pulled these numbers for, I think I saw a motorcycle crash and tried to do some estimations during a race. So a motorbike rider traveling 42 meters per second, can somebody multiply that by 3.6? How many kilometers per hour is 42 meters per second? What'd you get? 150, so fast. And he came to a stop in 5.7 meters. 5.7 meters is about from me to the back wall. So it's a panic, very fast stop. Probably not a fatal stop, but also not one where you would just go, oh, that was fun and casual. This would, in fact, what this is, he's wiped out and he's skidding in his racing uniform along the pavement and smashing into the hay bale. So it wants us to find A. It's going to be VF minus VI. Oh, no, I can't go like that. I don't know T. It's going to be VF, don't forget the squared, minus VI, don't forget the squared, over 2D. It's going to be 0 squared minus 42 squared all over 2 times 5.7. It's going to be bracket 0 squared minus 42 squared divided by bracket 2 times 5.7. And I get, do you get negative 154 points? I'll call it negative 155. Is that right? How many G's is that? About 15. Negative slowing down. Is that fatal? Probably not, especially if this was a motorcycle racer, they'd be wearing a helmet, they'd be wearing pads, they'd be wearing a leather suit, so they probably wouldn't even lose too much skin. But they're almost certainly going to get checked out on the ambulance, and they might be taking a trip to the ambulance to go get checked out on a hospital. They might break a bone, but they would probably survive. Now again, there's so many variables. If he was skidding face first, and he happened to skid right into a tree branch, okay, he's probably not surviving, but probably survived. Number 21, this is a neat question because I have the video for this. Spoiler alert, I'll show you the video. He does not nail the landing. I'm pretty sure he's injured. So we'll talk about why I think that. On August 19th, a world record was set by cliff jumping from a height of 58.8. You know what, Moses? Negative. Because it's a cliff. 
How fast was the jumper traveling when he hit the water? VF equals AT. Now, I'm going to assume for a cliff jumper that VI is zero. I've never seen a cliff jumper take like a running start and jump down, although I have seen them jump up a tiny bit, but I've never seen them jump up a huge amount. They're typically jumping sideways, but not up and down. So I think we can assume VI is zero. Um, oh, I can't use VF equals AT. I guess I'm going to have to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. This is why it's worth listing out the data. You can see if I don't do that, even I make mistakes when I'm in a hurry here. Square root. It's going to be the square root of 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 58.8. 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 58.8. Square root of that. Did you get 33.9 meters per second? You can't have. That has to be wrong. Why must that be wrong? Okay, this is that time when I have to overrule my calculator and say I wanted the negative square root. Not always, but this time. How long was the jumper in free fall for? I think I would use D equals AT squared over 2. You could also use VF equals VI plus AT. You'd be using your answer from part A to find part B, but that would work. Uh, it's going to be T equals 2 times D over A square root. It's going to be the square root of 2 times negative 58.8 divided by negative 9.8. 2 times negative 58.8 divided by negative 9.8. Square root of 12, so 3 point something. 3.46? Yep. Seconds. If the water took 3.5 meters to bring the jumper to a stop, I would probably mentally underline the word stop. What was the deceleration? Now, you got a choice here, Cole. You could let that 3.5 be negative because technically even there he's ending up below from where he started. If you do that, well, which way is he traveling when he hits the water, up or down? Is he speeding up or slowing down when he hits the water, once he's in the water? So which way is he technically accelerating then? Up. If you let down be negative, you'll get a positive acceleration because that's up. I chose to let this be positive. I'll get a negative acceleration indicating slowing down. I'd take either. But A is going to be VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D, where VF is 0 squared and D is 3.5. But I got a problem. I don't know VI. Or do I? The answer, oh, VI at the bottom of the free fall, sorry, VF at the bottom of the free fall, that's VI right when we hit the water. Yeah, it's going to be the negative 33.9 goes there. So I'm going to go bracket 0 squared minus bracket negative 33.9 close bracket, squared outside the bracket, close bracket, <gasps> divided by 2 times 3.5. And I get an acceleration of negative 164.2 meters per second squared. So it's all going to be how you round off. If I had actually used this answer button, if I had gone 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 58.8 equals square root answer button equals times negative 1 equals. And now if I had gone bracket 0 squared minus answer button squared close bracket divided by bracket 2 times 3.5. Yep. So as long as you match me to the first two sig figs and are only one away on the third sig fig, then I know you, we've done the same thing. How many G's is that? Well, let's find out. Oh, first of all, Matt, how many G's did the jumper experience while in free fall? Be obvious. Just one. Because what's the only force acting on him? That's one G. 
How many G's in the water? How would I convert this number here, Matt, to G's? How do I convert an acceleration into G's? You do, you just forgotten. That's okay. Oliver, how? Why divide by 9.8? Because the value of 1G is 9.8. So just divide your acceleration by 9.8. I will ask you to do G's tomorrow somewhere. Don't. Find the acceleration and then divide by 9.8. So divide by 9.8. 16.8, negative because it's slowing down. 16.7, 16.9. And the units for G's are G's. Now, I've told you I'm fairly sure that these numbers are accurate. Put your pencils down, look up. 